and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. We're in a bit of a different angle today and there's this sort of like moody, um, <laughs> this is from the blind so it looks like I'm, which reminds me a bit like a uh, New York private detective when you can see blinds but we're just going to carry on going for it. So today I'm going to be talking about these lovely, lovely, <laughs> lovely bookshelves that I've got here. Um, I was looking at them today and I was thinking I don't often make videos in which I just talk about my bookshelves so I thought I would get on Instagram and ask if anybody has any questions about about my bookshelves and I would answer them and I've got a bit of a free reign because I've moved the table bit back a bit. I don't know if I've mentioned, I've got a bit of a bad back and I do feel a bit better when I'm walking and moving around so I'm going to continue to do that. So let's crack on with the questions. I'll be answering questions about the bookshelves behind me. Let's do it. So first question says, do you have to reorganise them every time you get a new book? So as you can see, they're in colour coded order um, aside from the ones here. So these ones here are my favourite books. So these are books that get five stars or above and a here in my favourite books um, and then this side is sort of like Harry Potter books as well then we've got um, coloured then they're colour coded so white orange red white pink purple blue green another blue um, yellow uh, penguin cloth bound classics and then black and grey on the bottom and then this side on the bottom are David's books um, and some ones that I haven't fit in so no I don't reorganise them every time I get a new one what I tend to do, and you can see that happening here, is stack up this way. Also, they're quite deep, these shelves, so I can double stack. Um, that hasn't had to happen yet, um, but I can stack behind me. But no, I don't normally reorganise. I just sort of put them whatever colour the spine is. So, for instance, recently, this I've just hauled this Edna O'Brien book, um, which is green, and I just popped it up here on there. So, no, I don't really do much reorganising every time I get a new book. And the next one is favourite part about my shelves, and I'll be honest, it's the fact that they're in colour <laughs> colour organisation. I love things organised by colour. Um, occasionally, I have a rehaul of my wardrobe and organise things by cover uh, colour. Um, I really like sort of Instagram accounts and things that are curated of things that are organised by colour. And um, when I look at them, it just brings me so much joy that they're organised by colour. Can I say organised by colour anymore? Um, next question is how do you decide which books to keep or give away so i've done a few videos of this um, and i will link them down below where i just call books on my shelves which i will never read um, and i've done various ways of giving them away i've given them to um, my sister is a secondary school teacher and um, so I've given books to her to take in. I've taken books to where I work. I work in the diabetes centre within the NHS and um, we have like a little stall there and we sell books and the money goes back to Diabetes UK. Um, I've also taken books down the beach and left little notes on them and said, oh, like, hopefully you'll enjoy reading this. Um, and how I decide that is basically... If it's sat on my shelf for a really long time and I look at it and I think I'm never going to read it, then it's just wasting its time on my shelf because it could be read by somebody else. So that's probably number one. Um... I get rid of all books that I've read um, that I didn't give four or five stars just because I haven't got space to keep them. And again, they're sort of the books that I would never reread. Um, so they might well become a four or five star book for somebody else. Um, but yeah, mainly it's if I haven't loved them um, or if I don't think I'm ever going to read them, if they've been on there a long time. Um, and also I'm just getting a bit better about what books I like now. So I know I like books with female leads and books with um, that are written by females um, and with feminist themes and I like non-fiction with feminist themes. So, so like if I get sent a book um, and, and quite often publishers will contact me and say, would you be interested in sending this book, but, uh, getting this book? Sometimes if that doesn't happen and it arrives and say it's a man about, it's a book about a man in the world war, um, and I think, oh, I wouldn't like that. That goes straight into my pile of books to give away to somebody else who might like it or to put on one of my next videos uh, where I talk, where I take books um, away from here. So that's why. Um, how often do I reorganise them? Not very often at all. Do you know what I was thinking about recently? I see at Halloween a lot of people turn them all round so that this just the, it's the pages um, showing so it looks a bit spoopy. Um, and I did, there was a little bit of me that thought, oh, maybe I'll do that this year, but I just don't think I've got time. Um, since I've put them all in this colour order, I haven't once rearranged them. I've just sort of maybe had a bit of a sort of like, straighten them up there, put that there, move that there, give them a bit of a dust because sometimes they do get a bit dusty. Um, so yeah, I haven't reorganised them in terms of what colour they're in at once since I've moved in. Um, 
Next question, do you separate books from the same author if they have different colours? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so everything's done by colour. Um, so there's nothing, although here, so for instance, these Daphne du Maurier leather bound ones, which I bought second hand, they're all together. So if I've got, if they're all in the same colour and they're the same author, they'll go next to each other. But otherwise, so another example of this is Daphne du Maurier's books, where are they? Come on, babes, where are you? They'll all be hidden away. Oh, right, okay, so these ones with the stripy spine. So this is House on the Strand. This has got a yellow and black spine, so it's in my yellow section. But then we've got here um, another Daphne du Maurier, which has got a light blue and a dark blue spine. So, yeah, I, d I do separate them. Um, do you ever keep books on your shelves just because they look nice? No, I haven't done that because if they look nice, I tend to read them. And then if I don't like them, I get rid of them. Um, and then if I do like them, they end up on um, up there. So yeah, that doesn't really happen actually. I haven't really hung on to anything. I guess there's things like this, which, so Pride and Prejudice, this, this book of Pride and Prejudice, which is a um, illustrated edition, it's ever so lovely, but whenever I look in it, I always find it, oh, there we go, that, this sort of illustrated edition, um, but I've kept that because I'll read that again, it's just a bonus that it looks nice, so I guess it's not, I don't keep books specifically, I wouldn't read a book, hate it, and then hang on to that book, that's what I'm trying to say here. How many have you read compared to not read? So these are majority unread books. So the only, as I said, um, I only keep books if they end up on my favourite shelf, which is up here, which has got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 50. Uh, 40, 42, 44, 46 books up there um, and then on here there are some that I've loved which weren't my favourites just because I wouldn't want to get rid of them like for example Pride and Prejudice, The Restless Girls, um, what other ones, have I? oh the um, Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie, The Thing Around Your Neck because I love her and I did enjoy this book but it wasn't one of my favourites so but the majority of these uh, all unread so I'm just looking for instance here like Bloody Chamber not read it, What She Ate not read it, Sweet Girl not read it, Touch no, Girls on Fire no, Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie yes, White Oleander no, Edge of Reason yes, Brideshead Revisited no, Sufficient Grace no, uh, Modern Family no, Grapes of Wrath no, East of Eden no, Kind of Intimacy no, Spring no, She Dare so yeah, Bookworm yes, and um, Pig no, so like out of that section if we take that as a sample I've read like four books out of Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So, yeah, it's a lot more unread than read. Um, have I always organised by colour? Uh, no, when I was in my old flat, um, I didn't organise by colour. I just organised by, I guess they just went on my shelves. It wasn't even done by author or anything like that. I don't think I've ever organised before I saw um, it on Pinterest that people could organise books by colour, that's how I got the idea for this. Um, and then I did that when we had two little types so of, when I first started Booktube, I had two little tiny shelves, um, really short ones that are in storage now. Um, and they were, I started organising them by colour, which looked very cute and there was nothing of them. But now like these sort of big areas with also sort of like bits on them as well. So like white books, white unicorn, pink books, pink unicorn, green books, green cactus stuff. Um, that really pops, I think. Um, what is your favourite trinket on your shelves and is there a story behind it? Let's have a look. Well, I like these. These are bought to us by David's sister. There's L and D is hiding because it used to be that that was high, that was medium and then this was low, but that doesn't actually fit in there anymore. Oh, maybe it will. I'll leave it there. That's going to fall out. Um, but I like the L and D. I also really like these little feminist playing cards. Um, I got them for Christmas one year um, and they're just uh, playing cards, but with, um, come out, come out guys, but with um, little feminist people on them. So Gloria Steinem there um, and who else? Billie Jean King, um, but I will say they're quite difficult to play with because the colour coding doesn't really match for anything. So like for instance, India Gan in Indira Gandhi is nine of clubs there and she's on a green background. And then I've got Gloria Steinem who's six of clubs on a red background. So you have to take a big notice of when you're playing them. So I just quite like them being on display there. Um, so they would probably be my fave, but I've got loads of little things. Like I've got these cute little, <laughs> I've got little burger and chips. <laughs> Um, David won for me in a um, at Margate Beach on one of the grabber machines. Um, he won these for me, so yeah, I just like those. They're in my red section. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot, host of other things. Little Chinese cat got lots of little Harry Potter bits up there as well. So yeah, a few bits. Um, let's have a look. Uh, which shelf is my favourite? So looking at the colours of them, which of my which is my favourite? Purple always looks quite nice, I think. 
I haven't really got many, I've just taken two books off the purple section. I've been picking out my October TBR today and um, I'm trying to pick sort of like witchy books and things. And um, I think a lot of witchy books have purple spines because I've taken two or three off of here today. But I quite like purple. I also quite like pink because it's got this little guy on there as well. Um, so yeah, purple or pink. This whole, this whole shelf here. Um, uh, does David have a bookshelf? Yeah, he does. It's down here. Um, it's, a, it's a right mess. I don't even really want to show you, but it's got on it the gigantic beard that was evil, wizards and robots, how not to be a boy, um, and then some... I have to be careful because I'm in back, guys. Yeah. Uh, the Elephant Whisperer, The Penguin Lessons, Ready Player One, Jaws, A Street Cat Named Bob, um, The Impossible Fortress, all books that he's read, basically. He's been a bit of a cheeky reader this year. He hasn't really read much. Um... Next one. Have you kept any favourite books from childhood on your shelf? I don't think I have. I actually don't think I've got any books from child my childhood on here. But to be fair, I didn't really own many books when I was a child. We were very big library users, um, so I didn't really own many. I sort of had like anthologies and stuff, like they would be the gifts that would be bought for me for Christmas and stuff. Um, and I don't feel like children get much use out of anthologies. Like I remember, I don't ever remember being excited to pick up an anthology. I was much more excited to go and get a babysitter's club book from the library or, or read a Jacqueline Wilson book from the library and things like that. So yeah, I feel like the books I owned from childhood weren't aren't books that I would have hung on to anyway. Um, a book that you kept on your bookshelf even though you didn't like it. As I said, that doesn't really happen. Um, I haven't, like everything on here is is kept because I liked it or loved it or it hasn't been read. So yeah, I um, maybe one of my cloth bound classics. But then again, I've got a whole selection of cloth bound classics down here. I will just move you down there, just have a look. These cloth bound classics down here. But even then, every one that I've read, I've quite enjoyed. So yeah. I think it's all, I think I've just been hanging on to all of them, guys. Oh, I don't like that being like that. I like, I like completion like that. Yeah, completion. Um, how do you make space for new books? Do you change, um, do you constantly change the books on them? No, as I said, I um, get rid of books that I don't enjoy. So pick books off the shelves if I don't love them, then they, they go on. I also lend out a lot of books. So for every, all of these books I've got here, um, within my community, so <laughs> my friends, my family, my friends at work, um, um, David's family, um, I've, I've always got books lent out to people as well. So um, there'll always be books coming back in because someone's returning them to me. Um, what got you into reading and wanting to have your own book nook library at home? So I've always been into reading. Um, I guess the owning of books um, only really started happening when I got into booktube um, because I would see these beautiful things being at, um, sort of spoken about by people and I'd be like, oh yeah, no, I do want to own books. Um, so yeah, before then I was very much um, into, I'd, I'd supermarket market buy books, which is an awful way to buy books. Um, so I'd, I'd end up buying like, two for seven pounds in Tesco's, which are only ever sort of like top of the chart things anyway. So wasn't really a wide range of books. So booktube really enabled me to buy books and. Uh, shop in um, uh, independent bookshops and stuff. Pros and cons of organising by colour. So pro is that it looks lovely. Cons are that maybe it's hard to find, but because I'm so familiar with these bookshelves, because I pick a TBR every month, um, I quite often browse them and have a little tidy up and things like that. Um, I sort of know what colour things spines are. So if I was to, I'm just trying to think of a book that isn't, I'm just trying to think of anything. Just a book that I don't know the colour of because I know all the colours. So if someone says to me, oh, have you got, um, have you got a book by Daphne du Maurier? I would think, oh yeah, I've got the ones that have got the stripy spines. There's one there, there's one there. Um, and yeah, I just sort of tend to know just because I'm so familiar to them. So although it's not easy to find an author, it might be easier to find a book. And also, I just think it looks fun. I think that's the pro. I don't feel like there's many, like it's individual taste, isn't it really? And it, this works best for me, so that's why. Uh, do you plan to contain the number of books you have or just to buy new shelves if you need to? So these shelves were left here um, when, we, when we moved in. So they were already here, which was wonderful news. Um, but these are from Ikea and I do believe you can get them again. So if I needed to, I do have room to go um, one more that way with one of these. But like I said, they are double stacked. I do have quite a high turnover. So there is a chance that I won't need to, um, to, to, go, on to, to go on to more shelves. Um, I'm always wondering about your pink fluffy unicorn thingy. 
um oh god it's so wet so not wet but like stiff with children's spit um so this is um david bought this for me i think it was i think when we moved into our house this is what he bought me as a little housewarming gift i mean isn't he just the cutest um and it stays on the shelf and then whenever we have children come to visit which isn't super often but like happens occasionally i just sort of go oh do you want to play with this unicorn for a bit if they're getting a bit bored so that's why it's a bit sort of it feels a bit chewed but it's loved and chewed so that stays there until children come around and uh, they want to chew it um how are you uh, how are you so good in clearing out your bookshelves i can't get rid of a book yeah i guess i've just got no choice to be because i don't want things piling up um and um yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't want to ruin these guys. And then the last one is, which section is your least favourite section and why? I'll show you down to the bottom shelves because they're just not very well looked after. So these are my bottom shelves. So, oh God, let me try and... St so here is black into grey. This is like children's books and like all different colours. Oh God, bloody hell. Oh my back. Oh my back. Um, and then this is David's section, and that's my least. Oh God, my L's fallen over. Stand up, little L. Not gonna. Um, and those are my least favourite, um, just because they're they're just a bit untidy. But we do tend so beforehand. We had the big nanny's chair in front of these things again i just want to just nip that off in the corner we have big nanny's chairs so you never saw the bottom ones and recently we've had our table pulled out so it's only because i pushed the table back um that you can actually see those but i do need to do something about that maybe that's what i'll do as soon as i can just nip down there and up again because my back's hurting so much but anyway so thank you to everybody who um who submitted a question for this um it was fun talking about my shelves wasn't it for about 15 minutes um let me know down below how your books are organized let me know what you think of this book situation and I will see you all again soon for another victory video. Goodbye!